How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and welcome to the Apex Legends Season 20 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. In this video we're going to be covering absolutely everything you need to know regarding optimizations, the best in-game settings, so by the end of this video you are given the best possible gameplay experience for your system, whether it be high-end, low-end, old, new, Intel, AMD, Nvidia. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. But leveling up your gaming doesn't end there. If you're looking to share your best clips, crucial moments, or improve by watching back your own gameplay with a critical eye, still Series Moments has you covered. With the ability to automatically clip your gameplay on nearly all games without specific hardware like an Nvidia or Radeon GPU, working across practically all systems and hardware, with a built-in editor so you can get the exact clip you're looking for, with the ability to quickly drag and drop the clip out of the editor and into one of your favourite platforms like Discord, X or YouTube to share it. All you need to do is head over to the link in the description down below, download Steel Series GG, head into the Moments section, set your desired clip length, resolution, quality and and FPS, boot into Apex or any of your other games and enjoy automatic clips. If you ever want to clip something manually, all you need to do is press Alt and S, you'll then be notified in the top right hand side, where you can watch it back instantly, edit it and or share it via the app with a simple adjust, export, drag and drop and share. Level up your gaming today and support the channel by downloading and trying Still Series Moments today, utilizing the link in the description down below. First of all, we're going to start off with some extremely basic but very useful and quick Windows optimizations. Click the window button, search for GPU settings, then click on the graphics settings panel. Go to the top to change default graphics. If you see the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, you'll want to experiment around with this option later on after you've applied all of the optimizations in this video because there isn't just one setting that works best for every PC. Next up, if you're planning on utilizing G-Sync, FreeSync or just variable refresh rate, it's something I would highly recommend that you'll want to enable that option with inside of here if it's available. Last but not least is optimizations for windowed games. Because Apex Legends runs in DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 modes, it doesn't actually properly support full screen exclusive anymore, so regardless of which API you go with, the game is effectively running in a windowed mode anyway, so make sure this option is enabled for better performance in both APIs. For the last and most important Windows optimization that you could do to any PC, especially if it's running the same operating system for over a year or so, is to do a complete Windows fresh install. It's super quick and easy to do, especially on the newer updates of Windows 11, because you no longer even have to download Windows and stick it on a USB, you can do it all contained within the same PC you are currently using. This is hands down the best optimization you can apply to any system. The quickest way to do this on any system that supports it is to navigate down to the Windows button, search for Reset, select Reset this PC, then navigate to Reset this PC under Recovery Options. You'll then want to go with the Remove Everything option. Please do triple check absolutely everything before doing this. Next up, we're heading over to Game Optimizations. Take yourself into Steam, go over to Apex Legends, right click and select properties, where we'll then be able to find launch options. Head inside of the description down below, we'll then be able to find launch options to copy and paste. These will always be updated with the latest launch options, so the ones you see on my screen that I'm about to paste may be slightly different, but you'll always want to use the ones that are in the description, right click and select copy. Head back inside of Steam, go to the launch options box, right click and select paste. Now if you decided you wanted to utilize the DirectX 12 version of the game, which I would highly recommend that you test out, and we'll be testing out later on, at the end of the launch options you've just pasted, press the space bar, go back into the description and about a line or so underneath, you'll be able to find the DX12 launch option to also copy. Right click at the end, select paste to add on the DirectX 12 version. If you've decided to test and try out the DirectX 12 API, you will more than likely be met with the processing and compiling shaders pop up at the beginning of the game. Simply wait for this to complete, it can take a few minutes, but it's essential to ensure that you are getting correct performance on the DirectX 12 mode. Once you're inside of the game, access the game settings menu by going to the the bottom right and selecting game menu. We'll first of all start off with a few quality of life adjustments with inside of the gameplay section. I would highly recommend that you set your damage numbers to stacking as this will show you the exact value of damage in which you've inflicted and not the individual bullets. Ping opacity I'd recommend setting to faded. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu I would highly recommend that you switch this to off. I'd recommend also disabling usage sharing you can turn this on if you wish to do so but I have this turned off and the performance display. You can choose to keep this on or off to depending on your personal preference. Once completed, head over to the video tab found at the top. Before we jump into the presets, there are a few options we need to set up unique to your system. First of all is your display mode. In nearly all cases, you'll want to be going with full screen. Aspect ratio should be set to whatever setting is listed as native. This will typically be 16 by nine. Resolution, I'd recommend keeping at native for now, but we'll be coming back to this later. Brightness is complete personal preference. Field of view, there are pros and cons to using both high values and low values. So this does come down primarily to personal preference. 
points, but I prefer to use a higher field of view in this game, so I go with 110. Sprint view shake, minimal. V-Sync will be set to disabled for everyone watching this video, even if you're utilizing G-Sync or FreeSync, because you always want V-Sync disabled in the game. If you want to disable anti-aliasing within side of the game, there is a quick option you need to adjust, and that's to set the adaptive resolution target all the way down to zero. You can then turn off anti-aliasing. You can keep TSAA on if you wish to do so, but if you want to turn off AA, that is how you do it. Last setting before we jump into the optimized presets, the texture streaming budget. This depends on how much VRAM you have accessible on your system. For those of you that are going with the recommended preset and you want a decent balance to your in-game settings, then you want to be setting one setting lower than your GPU's maximum VRAM. If you're not sure how much VRAM your GPU has, press the Windows key, navigate down to your taskbar, right click, and open Task Manager. Go to the left hand side to the Performance tab. On Windows 10, you'll find that listed at the top. Scroll all the way down to your GPU. Scroll down once again, where you'll then be able to find dedicated GPU memory. I have 8 gigabytes available, so one setting below 8 gig in the game is very high. With that out of the way, on screen now you'll be able to find the two optimized presets in which I would recommend. For those of you chasing absolutely every single frame possible and want the lowest level of input latency, go with the eSports config. It keeps the game looking extremely crisp and clean, but favours an eSports advantage by minimising visual clutter and increasing performance. For those of you that are looking for a more balanced or recommended preset, on the right hand side the recommended preset is for you. This is the best mixture of optimised settings for both performance and visual settings, leading you to lower input latency whilst keeping a lot of the visual candy enabled so you find the best balance. Pause the video, copy all of the settings shown, jump into a live match or into the training area, see how the game performs and looks on that preset, and if you don't like it, try out the other preset and see what works best for you. Go to the bottom right and select apply. For those of you that have decided to go with the eSports config, for further optimizations you can actually adjust some settings lower using the config files. If you wish to do this, you'll need to navigate over to the Windows button and search for saved space games. Select the saved games folder, go to respawn, apex, local, where you'll then be able to find videoconfig.txt. Once inside of it, there are a few different options in which we're going to adjust. You may not wish to adjust all of them, but for the recommendations for the absolute best FPS and lowest input latency, you'll want to adjust some of the settings listed on screen to the values in which are shown. Change them over, hit save on the config, boot into your game, and see how you get on. Now at this point, we're not done with the optimizations. If you're still looking for a significant FPS increase even after after applying one of the optimized presets, there are two paths you can go down to get even more FPS for your game, but one may be better than the other. First of all is to potentially utilize Nvidia's image scaling or Radeon Super Resolution. These optimizations are fantastic and will allow you to set lower than native resolutions inside of your game. Now I'm not going to recommend that you use those in this game because on some systems this could actually enable different resolutions which lower your refresh rate. So alternatively, a really easy option which is accessible to everyone is to press Alt and Z or Z on your keyboard. Depending if you're using a Radeon GPU or an NVIDIA GPU, or if you're using the new NVIDIA app, you'll see a different overlay come up, but they're very similar. If you're on an NVIDIA GPU, we want to access the game filter section. One very quick game filter I would highly recommend that you try out is the RTX Dynamic Vibrance filter, if it's available to you. Go to the drop down menu for this, change the values for the intensity and saturation boost, and this will be a decent uplift to all of the colors within inside of the game, but that's not the setting we're looking for. We're actually going to be scrolling down until we find Sharpen. Press plus on this to add this to the game. Go to the drop down menu for Sharpen, where we can then change the intensity and ignore film grain. On Radeon GPUs, you'll need to navigate over to the Radeon Image Sharpening, or RIS. We will then also be able to adjust the sharpen setting. For me, in my game, you can see that I'm currently getting about 103 frames per second. At this point, press Escape, head to settings and select one resolution lower than your native resolution. So for this system, it would mean going from 4K down to 1440p, which is quite drastic, but you'll see there's a huge FPS uplift. Select apply. As you can now see, we're able to get about 190 frames per second, which is a huge FPS increase. Now this may not be as large on your system, depending on how GPU bound you are, but you will see a decent uplift on most machines. Now this won't look as good, but this is where the sharpen setting comes in. Open the Radeon or Nvidia overlay once again, go back over to RIS, or the NVIDIA game filters, then adjust the intensity of the sharpen setting and ignore film grain until this gets to a level that you are happy with. It will never look as good as native, but it really comes down to finding that balance of lower resolution and sharpness that's acceptable visually to you, especially for those of you on the eSports config looking for all FPS gains possible. This is just a quick, simple option that's available to everyone and you should definitely try out. If you happen to be experiencing micro stuttering within inside of the game, one very quick fix for those of you on NVIDIA GPUs is to navigate inside of the 
NVIDIA control panel, head over to manage 3D settings, scroll all the way down towards the bottom until you find shader cache size. Go to the drop down menu for this and set this to unlimited. Go to the bottom right and select apply. If you're experiencing issues opening Apex Legends where it fails to boot or crashes very quickly once you're in the menus, number one reasons are typically going to be if you have any sort of CPU or GPU overclock or undervolt, you'll want to turn it off for Apex Legends because the menus specifically are quite buggy and seem to stress components very heavily. Next up is potential background applications. Try closing them, try booting into the game and see if that works. Last but not least, if you're still having these issues and you can't seem to fix them, I would definitely recommend trying out the DirectX 12 version of the game because it doesn't seem to have as much sensitivity inside of the game menus or background apps or overclocks that you may be running. Last thing to do is finalize the optimizations by utilizing G-Sync, FreeSync or setting a manual FPS cap. You need to be using at least one of these options. Leaving the game completely uncapped in many cases could potentially be increasing latency even though you're getting slightly higher FPS. Even for those of you that are able to achieve 300 FPS and you're constantly hitting the engine FPS limit, this should be avoided and you should at least be utilizing a maximum FPS cap of 290 to avoid potential stuttering issues from this. If you're someone that has FreeSync or G-Sync support on their monitor and you've been hesitant to use it, I would highly recommend that you at least try this out for yourself because it's a complete game changer when set up properly. I recommend this in practically all of my FPS guides now. It's incredible, especially with games that have fluctuating FPS such as Apex Legends, Tarkov, Warzone. A proper G-Sync or FreeSync setup is essential. For those of you on NVIDIA GPUs inside of your in-game settings, you need to make sure that NVIDIA Reflex has been set to either enabled or enabled plus boost. For NVIDIA users, you'll also need to make sure that your FPS max is set to zero with inside of the launch options and you utilize no other frame caps because NVIDIA Reflex will automatically cap your FPS a few FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate for you. That's it for the NVIDIA specific settings. Now, whether you're using FreeSync or G-Sync, you need to one, make sure that VRR, FreeSync or G-Sync has been enabled on the monitor settings. You then need to ensure that this technology is then enabled inside of the AMD or NVIDIA control panel. Inside of both the AMD and NVIDIA control panel, you also need to enable enable VSync inside of the control panel and turn VSync off inside of the game. For those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs, you'll need to set your max FPS about 10 frames lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. So if you're on a 144 hertz monitor, set your FPS max to about 134 because we always want to make sure that our game is operating inside of the G-Sync window to get all of the benefits. And there you have it. Jump inside of your game, try it out. I guarantee it will feel incredible. If this isn't for you, you've tried it before and you still don't want to utilize it, then you would at least want to set a manual FPS cap. That's something your system can achieve about 99% of the time. There are a few different methods in which you can utilize to do this, but please only use one of them. You never want to utilize multiple methods of capping FPS because you could run into potential stuttering issues or increased latency. Method number one and easiest is to utilize the game's built-in FPS cap via the launch options, FPS max zero and change this to the number you wish to cap your FPS at. If you don't wish to go with that, go inside of the Radeon control panel or NVIDIA app, head over to these sections within inside of the applications and input your FPS cap for the game. Last but not least, you can utilize Revatune's statistics server via MSI Afterburner if you do have that installed to your game, go to the frame cap option and inputting the number of FPS you wish to cap at. When choosing an FPS cap, you want to utilize a value that your PC is actually able to achieve about 99% of the time. Let's say you're playing Apex Legends anywhere from 100 140 to 190 FPS. If you choose to cap your FPS at 190, well you're barely getting to 190 most of the time, so you're getting none of the benefits of using that cap. In this scenario, you'd be better off capping at 130 or 140 on the lower end scale because that's what your system is able to achieve. Two last things I would highly recommend that you now test out on your system is to one, try a few games with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled and try a few games with it off. If you don't see any difference, leave it on, but if you see an improvement, leave it off. Next up is to try out out both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 versions of the game. Latency between the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 versions of the game are practically identical. It's all about finding out what works best for your system. And if you're getting the refresh rate bug, well, DirectX 12 version is gonna run better for you anyway. Outside of the in-game optimized presets and base optimizations included in this video, if you're someone that is serious about getting the optimal performance out of your system, one video in which I would highly recommend that you check out is the Advanced FPS Companion Guide. This video is for those of you looking for a little bit extra to dive deeper into your system to further optimize it or doing anything that could be costing performance. The video can be found linked in the description down below for those of you looking to dive slightly deeper into ensuring that you are getting the optimal performance. There you guys have it. Let me know of your results in that comment section down below alongside any other tips or tricks you may have. If you're enjoying optimization content, remember to check out the playlist section in the description down below. If you're not entirely sure where to go next, check out one of the two videos on screen now and I'll see you guys over there.